What's going on everybody? It's Chris Chavez here with Fandro.com and you guys are watching the Android Overload. This is going to be a series of nightly videos where we kind of recap all of the biggest news stories from throughout the day. So uh, we're just going to jump straight to it because we have a few big stories to cover. Uh, first off being the HTC M7 was or has finally been leaked. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with the phone, this is HTC's or is rumored to be HTC's upcoming flagship device. You remember, remember last year they had the HTC uh, One X? And I thought that was a totally awesome phone. It's, it's it's probably the sexiest. I think it's the sexiest Android phone to date. Uh, I actually am trying to find a cheap one online on Craigslist so I can just post it on my wall because I just love the look of it and I just want to hold it at night and just, I don't know, get, get weird with it. Uh, the M7 is going to be their new flagship for 2013 and it's expected to be unveiled at Mobile World Congress in, at the end of February. So uh, the, we finally get some leaked pictures or images of the device. There's been a render that's been posted. Uh, we've got all that on the links down below. Uh, the render looks pretty legit, although that stuff can be, you know, edited and photoshopped and somebody can make it on their computer. So um, that was kind of, we were a little iffy on, but there's been some images of the device leaked in the wild, which look a little more legit. And the phone is rumored to have the same specs as the HTC Droid DNA. This is, uh, so you had the same 5 inch 1080p display. Uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM, all that fun stuff. But the cool thing for the M7 that they're going to be introducing is an all new version of Sense. So uh, Sense is uh, HTC's UI that they put on top of stock Android. <clears throat> and I've loved it since it was on the G1, or not the G1, but the Hero back in the day. Uh, the only problem is it's been getting kind of stale, just that the icons have been exactly the same. The camera icon, the phone icon, all that stuff's been the same. But HTC has gone back to the drawing board and they're making Sense look a ton more minimal so it actually um, follows I guess uh, Google's design philosophy with Android a little bit more and the hollow UI and all that fun stuff so uh, it looks very minimal very clean and absolutely gorgeous uh, the problem that a lot of this spit the problem that a lot of people are having is a screenshot from the widget which looks a lot like Windows Phone um, you have like, you know, Windows Phone has the live tiles that updates. I guess HTC has their widgets that look like that now too, which I think is absolutely awesome. But apparently some people think it's really lame and there's, I'm not gonna, blah, 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 blah. But if you don't like the widget, don't put it on and put your own widget on. There's tons of widgets on Android. You don't have to use Sense widgets, so nobody's imposing that. Uh, the icons, again, I think look totally, totally awesome and sexy. The phone itself looks, again, similar to the Droid DNA. It looks like it's a little bit of DNA and then the 8X which is a Windows phone that HTC made and everybody said was the sexiest device they've ever seen and they wish it had Android. Um, so HTC was listening and they're like, all right, we'll just put Android on it and we'll change up a little bit of stuff and move the camera around a little bit. And that's what it seems like they did. So very excited to see what HTC brings with the M7. Uh, again, yeah, just, I love, I'm, I'm a big fan of HTC. So we'll see what happens uh, at Mobile World Congress. So moving on to the next bit of news, the Motorola X phone has been, I guess there's been some details, supposed details from some tipster, some guy that knows some cousin who works for somebody that does something for Motorola. So the phone is supposedly going to be uh, Motorola's big flagship device. So uh, we don't really see that too much with Motorola. They tend to release different variations of different phones on different carriers, but this is going to be the X phone. And supposedly it's going to be announced at Google I.O. Why Google I.O. you ask? Well, apparently it's going to be running stock Android or a version of stock Android. And um, this doesn't mean that it's going to receive updates directly from Google. It's just going to be a stock Android device. So similar to like the HTC G2 was in the day, back in the day, or the Droid, Droid 1 was and Droid 2. It's going to be running stock Android, but it's going to have whatever carrier apps that carriers want to put on it. Uh, kind of sucks, but the good the good thing with that is that carriers can subsidize it so they can offer it for $99 on contract, $200 on contract, so people can get it on the cheap with a two-year agreement. Um, I think that's awesome, but you just won't get those speedy updates. So Google's going to have to send the update to Verizon or Sprint or whoever. They're going to have to take a look at the updates, and then they're going to have to send them down to uh, the user. So it's a little bit weird with that. And then there's talk about Verizon charging $15 to unlock it. Um, the bootloader or some mess like that. So we'll we'll have to see how that, that pans out. Typically, I mean, I love 
Motorola's build quality, I think that there's only there's only a few Android devices that can kind of compete with the iPhone as far as like how solid and rigid they feel. And Motorola does really, really great with that. So we'll have to see what that what, what comes with the Motorola X phone. Uh, moving on to the next bit of news. Uh, right before I was about to sign off this evening, the LG Optimus G Pro was officially announced. This is, it's been rumored forever now, but now it's finally been made official. And for NTT Docomo, no less. This is a Japanese carrier, you know, over in Japan and they unveiled the phone at some event that they were having with a bunch of other devices. But the phone has a 5-inch 1080p Full HD display, awesome, and a quad-core S4 processor from Qualcomm that we've seen on a bunch of devices so far. But this one's actually clocked to 1.7 gigahertz, um, 2 gigabytes of RAM, all that fun stuff. But get this, a 3,000 milliamp battery. So for all you battery people that are saying you'll buy whatever phone comes out, oh, if only it had a 3,000 milliamp battery. A lot of people said that with the Optimus G. Well, now's the time to put the money where your mouth is, but, well, maybe not right now anyway, because the phone actually hasn't been announced for anywhere outside of Japan. So we'll have to wait to see where this is coming uh, stateside, or even if it will come stateside, I'm sure it will, but overall the design looks kind of iffy to me. I think the phone looks bland, and I'm not really too... Uh, jazzed about the design. I love the LG Optimus G. It's probably one of my favorite devices from last year and um, Not liking what LG is going with this this phone, but all people see is milliamps and they're probably gonna love it So um, I guess that pretty much concludes the Android overload for tonight uh, Jump on down to the links all the links are gonna be down below for all the stories We just talked about right now and the Android overload itself where you guys can get uh, Some of all the little tidbits that we didn't post from throughout the day. So with that I am Chris Chavez. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Sayonara. Good night and uh, Good luck <laughs>